So today I will show you how to make something with the versatile barbed cane and I will actually make that uh, flame uh, color combination that someone asked for and I will make actually a little bit of a tweaked barbed cane so you see I have uh, three different Skinner blends the white, yellow, and cinnamon, and the red, sorry, not cinnamon, uh, then white and black, and white and green Primo. And um, I am showing you exactly how I am going to mix them. As you can see, yellow is the base, then white and green, and then here I am going to leave a little bit more white because black is such a strong color. And here I have my Skinner blend. Uh, what you need to be aware of is that on the white and black and white and green, you have to have the transient uh, area very wide. That's the area where one color changes into another. Because uh, I am going to do a completely different reduction of Skinner blend than uh, what you're used to. So first, I'm going to do the normal jelly roll thing I'm not going to repeat that you can watch the other tutorial on this one now I am going to do a regular plug the way that uh, you've seen before probably and the way that it's a very good uh, way to actually store your Skinner blends for later use but uh, you are used to reducing a Skinner blend either to a jelly roll or to um, a fan this time I'm going to reduce it completely different and I'm going to reduce it into a sheet because I want a gradient. I do not want two different sheets, a white and a black. I want a gradient white to black. So I'm going to use the roller very little just to get things moving a little bit. You've seen I, I chose the acrylic a block to flatten the, the Skinner blend and I am using the, the roller only a little bit once in each direction and after which I will just be pulling the sheet to until it reaches the size that I needed it to reach and uh, because it's been so many times through the pasta machine uh, it will stretch very easily. Be aware of the fact that all these Skinner blends, because they are strong colors, they will require anywhere between 30 and 50 passes through the pasta machine, but the result is definitely worth it, believe me. So I'm going to get rid of the very ends so I can blend everything properly. After I, I roll so I can blend the ends, of course. But see, otherwise it's a perfectly normal, regular, wrapped jelly roll. And um, I am going to do exactly the same way as the regular uh, barbed uh, cane is done. But I will be tweaking it a little bit. I want to put these, uh, the cane on a green background. So I am making again the same. Oh, yeah, let me show you what my guys are doing. You can see Seamus trying to be naughty. Connor is laying with his belly up and whispered just so that I pointed the camera at him so he's running away. But yeah, Connor's fuzzy belly. Yes, so I am doing the same thing with the green. And uh, after I cut the jelly roll in four, like it's normal for the barbed cane, and I do the exact normal thing, I pull up the edges practically. But what I will be doing, I will get the green and white gradient and I will do the exact same type of sheet that I did for uh, wrapping the jelly roll. So after I'm pulling up the edges, 
on the quarters and I flatten them like for putting them together in a cane I am going to place a piece of the white and green gradient on the other side of the quarters and then I'm, I will pull the, the green part down the same as I pulled the, the black part up and I'm doing the same for all the quarters and then I make sure they are nice and flat and I put them together in a cane exactly like the normal board cane but with that extra green semi quarter wrap however you want to call it so I'm flattening them up again and making sure that they line up properly and they are the same length so they form a nice rectangular cane that I am working in the exactly the same way only it has that extra green semi wrap and I am cutting the edges looks kind of like teeth doesn't it <laughs> and then I will be cutting this in three remember I told you that this cane can be used exactly like any kind of flower kaleidoscope cane and that is exactly what I'm doing uh, why I did not uh, change the shape of the whole cane into a triangle because I want to keep it uh, even and I don't want the the green bottom to stay behind while the middle uh, gets elongated and it's much harder to control that when you have a long cane than when you have uh, just the pieces of a cane believe me I will make my bet I will do my best to to make them uh, equal and after I turn all of them into triangles I will put them together and see I am paying a lot of attention that they get equal all sides and the bottom and the sides and everything and now I am putting them together to form the half of the kaleidoscope cane and I take a little black sausage for the middle and then I will be cutting that big cane after I trim the edges of course and you can already see how gorgeous it is uh, and I will be cutting the cane in two yes it's a good idea to measure always and I sometimes measure in centimeters depends which of them it's easier to to count on being from Europe I'm perfectly fine with centimeters and I put them together and I make a round cane that looks very much like I don't know mums zinnias you decide and uh, of course I need to straighten it up and then I will be reducing it and I will get quite a bit of uh, trimmings from it but it is beautiful isn't it and yes that can be perfectly used for flame pattern now I, I think that I can make a little bit of an unusual backing I got all the unusable scraps and made them into a scrap sheet and then I put some of the trimmings and I ran them through the pasta machine so it came up like this which looks absolutely gorgeous and I put some uh, texture sheet on it and this will make a beautiful back for my pendant and I'll actually do the same thing for because I decided to make earrings as well so I'm taking some green the same green that I used for the black uh, green and white gradient 
and my humongous oversized cookie cutters that I found at the Dollar Tree. And look how you can get all kinds of shapes by combining them. See what a gorgeous round triangle that we all love I made. <laughs> I'm smart. But yeah, no, I really was happy when I found those cookie cutters. And they look neat because you can see through them. And now I'm going to get uh, first some of the shaving scrapings, however you want to call them. Because I think that they are really cool when the cane was very big. And I'm going to use some of those in what I'm making. Of course, I could have made a much bigger cane, but then I'd have had too much leftover and not, nothing to do with it. I already have a lot of leftovers, and I'm sure I can find a use for them, but probably not for a, an insane amount of leftovers. I hate to get scrap clay through the pasta machine. I always try to do something with it. So, you see, I can make it like half a flower on the pendant. And then I'm taking uh, slices from the regular cane. And I did, took a piece of the cane and I reduced it some. And then I took a piece of the reduced cane and I reduced it to insanely tiny dimensions. Because I am crazy like that. But anyway, so I'm placing my flowers. I think they look like flowers. Don't you think they look like flowers? So it's a flower or summer... The last of summer pendant, because we are now nearing fall. And see, I am not putting that on top of the other ones because I don't want too much layering. So I'm just cutting the edges and I'm kind of squeezing it between the other three. So it looks like it's behind them. And of course... Uh, I had to make some itty bitty ones and bigger ones and anyway I need to trim it first and this one is pretty much ready to go in the oven but um, during the Clay With Me Sunday I told you that I hate on this type of patterns to use the rollers so I wouldn't uh, disturb and distort the pattern. So I just go in and I shave until I get a nice flat uh, even surface. Now for the earrings I am using this rounded triangle cutter that I actually made from a round cutter. And I am using the shavings that uh, I took from the pendant and a couple slices of the smaller cane. I don't need the earrings to be perfectly symmetrical. I like them whimsical and wildflower, prairie stuff style. So these are ready to go in the oven too. But I think that I'm going to put a bead above them, between them and the earring findings. So I just got again some of the scrap clay and I, may, I put some uh, cane slices on it to make beads. Once they are baked, of course, you put uh, TLS on the back and see how beautiful that uh, special back uh, looks on it. And from the other scrap clay, I'll make the same thing for the earrings. See, I'm placing little bits and pieces of shavings on the scrap clay, rolling it through the pasta machine, and there I got, again, nice uh, backing. Because I thought it would look much nicer than just plain green. And uh, after you let it sit for about 5 minutes for the TLS to thicken up so it wouldn't slide when you do the trimming, Trim fairly flush with the edge. I'm going to do the what I call bezedging. And uh, when you place the strips, make sure you always place them flush with the backing, not with the front. Because that's the hardest to uh, smooth out and make it look nice, not the front. So, make sure that it is well nice and flush with the back sheet. 
and then again let it sit after you place this uh, these strips let it sit for about five minutes and then go in and start smoothing the back exactly where the strip and the back uh, the clay from the back sheet are um, uh, coming together and then you just uh, trim what's in the front flush with the front now this front because I, I baked it on a um, light bulb is curved so I will follow the curve and then if necessary I can go back with my finger and do a little bit of smoothing just make sure that everywhere uh, it is uh, flush check it with your finger because sometimes you cannot really see and then I will be placing some jump rings in the um, uh, triangles for the earrings just make a cut with the exacto knife insert the jump ring in with the open uh, inside never leave an open outside and never manipulate a, a jump ring that's in clay because it's going to break the clay after a while and I will use these paddle bales on the pendant because I don't think that the jump rings are uh, sturdy enough and I don't have thicker silverish jump rings when you insert, insert the paddle, see these paddles are a little bit narrower between the paddle and the bale itself push against the uh, baked clay that way you'll not come out even if it, you see, even if it is a, a curved surface I still can very nicely go in and then make sure you smooth the the clay put it back together near the bale so it would look nice and there we go they look very pretty and everything is ready to go in the oven ain't that pretty now um, I decided to make some end caps too. I have these dowels that I bought at the Dollar Tree. Yes, I go a lot at the Dollar Tree. So what? I find all kinds of treasures. So I'm just wrapping the some sheets on which I uh, placed some uh, shavings again at the end of the dowels. And then I'm making a little hole. And those will be my end caps. End cap beads. Make sure that you uh, trim the, the edge nice and straight. And then just because I still have scraps, I made a few tube beads. I decided not to put any kind of varnish on this because the colors look just too pretty. And I think that varnish would uh, take away the, the gloss will kind of cover the details. So... I'm using a toggle clasp, some green jute cord because I, th I think that this green matches very very nicely and then I'll use a little piece of chain with a little car, uh, heart as a counterweight. So I'm making first the earrings. Um, I don't know I brought the drill bits there I forgot that I put jump rings in the earrings. Oh well. Did see? As usual. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, so I will get some um, 24 gauge wire and I will connect, I will get a wire through the bead, make a wrapped loop at the earring finding, and then make a wrapped loop at the triangle piece of the earring. Now be very, very careful when you uh, place the triangle piece. Uh, make sure that you place it facing forward because it's very easy when you have earrings like this that have a face and a, a front and the back uh, to place them backwards and then you realize only after you're done and you try to put your earrings on and they're like okay they are facing behind me I just want to show everybody who's coming behind me what pretty earrings I have yeah so um, yeah, make sure that you insert the um, the dangling piece properly. And as you can see, it's not a hard thing to do. Just those wrapped loops and you have a pair of pretty earrings.
just make sure that you wrap really good the wire where you wrap the loop so there won't be any sticking out with the jute I just uh, um, put it in six and then doubled it and put it through the bales and then placed the tube beads and then I'm doing make sure when you measure when you have this type of pendant when you measure make sure that you measure the pendant too don't measure just the cord because you'll think that you have an 18 inch and you find out that you actually have a 21 inch now you've seen me doing uh, wrapping the end of cords before so I didn't go through that again I'll put a link to another tutorial of mine if you want I just thought that you might want to see how I'm putting this cool and cap beads on and always if you use Loctite or anything it's a good idea to wait for like half an hour because uh, most of these glues except for super glue of course uh, need about half an hour to set and they need 24 hours to completely cure but after half an hour you're good to go and then uh, again I will do a wrapped loop to connect the um, toggle clasp but when it comes to the chain and the little counterweight, I don't really trust the regular jump rings. So I usually make double coil rings. So with those, it's less risk of the jump ring opening and you starting to lose your stuff. Um, of course, here too, be very careful. Don't and tuck in really good the end of the wire because you don't want anybody to get scratched. If need be, use a little bit, uh, a file it a little bit um, to make sure that it would not scratch. So I use the handle of a paintbrush to do my double coil rings. And I will use that to connect first the chain to the um, ring of the toggle clasp. And I usually put it on the, um, on the stick of the toggle, not on the loop of the toggle. And then I, I make another one to connect the little heart counter counterweight. And here we are, we have our little tweaked barbed cane set last of summer set with a pretty pendant necklace and a pair of pretty earrings it's like a field of wildflowers happy claim <laughs>